It's the Legacy United Windblade. Yes, the brand new Windblade from the Legacy United. I have it in hand. My Captain Kyle will be going through this guy. Well, girl. And this is a versus review, so we get some extras. So I'll be putting her up against the Robots in Disguise version of Windblade and the Combiner Wars version of Windblade. So this is a triple versus review. And I'm going to go through all these guys, and you can figure out which ones you want in your collection. And let me know at the end which one you think is the best. Be right back. So before, people are like, wait a minute, that's the Generations. This is actually from the Combiner uh, Hunters 3-pack. And I like it very much because she's got a huge staff. Her heels are a pain in the ass, but you know... But yes, I do have the Generations one. I decided to use the Combiner Wars one instead because I like the colors better. And I can't find this one sword right now, so it's somewhere. So I'd rather go with some complete ones. But we're going to put these two ladies aside. And we're going to open up the Legacy United. And yes, the knife is back. And I mean, the packaging is nice. You can see her in the window. It's got... Nice pictures of the various modes on the back, and of course, you know, the side panels. Cool artwork. So we have her on her cardboard prism, with her, no doubt, sword in there. Instructions. Shitty piece of paper. And we don't need that. It's a nice box, but I can't save all the boxes. So I've gotten her out of her box, but I'm going to use these snippers to get these little plastic pieces of shit off of her and make a mess on my table. There she is. I'm going to put her wings down because that's a little bit more normal for her. And we'll take out her armament, which is a sword and her fan thing that plugs into the back of her head. It is interesting how Wingblade seems to be reminiscent of Japanese culture when she's, in fact, from Cybertron. But hey, Sideswipe liked her a lot. Damn, that boy had a Cybertronian heart on for her. So she does not have a sheath, which is interesting. But let's take a look at the deco on the figure and put her on the turntable of doom or the wheel of pain. Okay, it's not really a, that much of a pain. So as you can see, she's got the nice stylized face. She's got a purple energy sword now. So her and Mace Windu are tight, I guess. And you can see she's got the uh, wings with the air turbine fans. She's got the nose cone on her back. She's got some nice detailing. The blue is very nice. Her face is really well painted. Um, not your normal, you know, just a face type deco. She's got the whole eye painting and, you know, forehead painting and stuff like that. But really a nice version of Windblade. Now, certain versions like Combiner Wars and Generations, her heels kind of can very easily go out of place. These heels are a little more practical. They look like jets, so she's standing on her jets, and she's got tail fins in here, or some kind of fins, that also give her nice stability to stand in her robot mode. So very nice. Let's check out the posability. All right, we're gonna take the sword out of her hand, just so you can see more easily, and I don't poke my eye out. And starting at the bottom, does she have some ankle swivels? She does, she has very, very, Good ankle tilt swivels right in there so she can be in a very wide stance as she is speaking to a city because she's a city speaker. At least she was in one incarnation or two. Now let's check out the Jean-Claude Van Damme and I can already tell she can do it. And even the nose cone in the back does not cause any problems. She can sit in that pose all day, which is nice, which means she's got some great leg articulation. The knee's a little bit double jointed, but she can kick forward pretty well. Yeah, about like chest, stomach height on some of the other bots. Going backwards, she can kick even higher. So her leg can go up when she's kissing side swipe. <laughs> I, I don't know that her and Slick would get on that well. She can do a nice side kick and you can make it really high if you use both legs and kick someone right in the face. Bends at the knee very nicely and has got this very sharp knee cover um, to basically neuter anyone that she needs. 
Now, there is a swivel, but it's only partial. So she can swivel her leg out to the side, which is nice for posing, but it doesn't go all the way around. The only swivel part is at her hip, but you know, she can do some nice ballet, some nice posing, some yoga. Very nice. Twisting at the waist. She does twist at the waist all the way around. So great for dynamic posing. I don't see any other type of abdomen. Uh, I don't think she can do a crunch, but you know, obviously she can sit down, but yeah, twisting at the waist though is good. Her arms can almost, I mean, you can, if you push them out to the side, you, you can pretty much twist them all the way around, but the wings interfere with just going straight back, obviously. Bends at the elbow. She has a swivel, which is located near her shoulder. The hands also can turn the fists, or in this case, open hands. She has an open-handed mold, so she can twist those hands around for, again, some dynamic posing with her weapon. Her head turns all the way around, and of course I have the little fan on the back of her head to keep her cool and, you know, to make her look cool. And you can remove it and use it as a weapon. Though I got it in there, it's uh, a little tough getting it out. Er, I think I have to invest in one of those parts pullers that I see some other YouTubers have to save on the fingers. But you can take it out, you can put it in her hand like so. So she has it in her hand. I'm also curious. She's got these slots on her wrists. So I wonder if it can fit in there. Doesn't seem to be able to fit quite in there. Seems slightly too thick. But again, she can hold it in her hand. She can have her sword in her other hand, which is loose. But then if you push it all the way in, she's got a good grip on it. So great for dynamic posing. Other points of articulation, which uh, probably don't get a lot of use. These fins on her legs can be moved out. I don't know why you would want to do that, but you know, it might be a cool look. And the wings can go up. They can tilt back a little bit. So she can flap. She can bring these up and bring her fans around and use that to create a wind tunnel attack. I wouldn't use that on Aang. He's, you know, he's an airbender. He does blast the wind right back at you. But overall, a very cool figure. I'm liking it so far. Great views on every side and great deco. Oh, the head can also, she can look up a bit because, you know, she's got to look up when she's talking to a city. You know, she's talking to Metroplex, she's talking to Fort Max, whomever. And you can kind of push the head forward so she's looking down a little bit at, you know, Denny or something who's trying to, like, fix her in some weird way. So, a very cool figure. I like it so far, but let's take a look at the others. Now, this Legacy United says it's from the Robots in Disguise universe. So, let's take a look at the Robots in Disguise one first. I'm going to put her sheath onto her leg. I know you can put it on her back somehow, maybe. Maybe that's the other one. But uh, I like the sheath being at the waist, even though it falls off. So the robot in disguise one, the heels are reminiscent of like half of a jet cone. So she stands a little easier than say the generations one, which was, you know, a fan chosen name and figure, you know, they narrowed it down. I was not part of that process. So I'm not sure exactly what it was like, but it, it's cool that Hasbro occasionally listens to us, occasionally. But very similar deco. I like the face deco, even though she's got like a face mask, so it covers her mouth. Uh, robots in disguise, they had a tendency to these plates that would cover their mouth and then they'd look like wannabe ninjas. But very nice deco, very nice detailing. We will do a comparison on the detailing on all three once I go through everybody. But nice yellow, the dis the Autobot symbol. I almost said Decepticon. No, Autobot symbol on her chest in the Robots in Skies logo. Apparently you can scan it and do something with a game, which I've never played, but that's all right. So cool, about the same amount of kibble. And she has a sheath, which is nice. So I'm going to put that aside and pull out her sword from her hand. And I think you can also take the uh, fan off of the back of her head and plug it into her hand somewhat for use as a weapon or if it's just too hot of a day. Or, you know, if she needs to direct airplanes, which could have came handy in one of the particular episodes, but 
All right, let's get into the posability. So this bot does not have any type of ankle swivel tilts, anything like that. However, let's see. She can not quite do a full Jean-Claude Van Damme. She can do a split, but because of the ball joints on her hips, you can't push them out so that they are opposite each other. So slightly disappointing there, but she can kick about the same height as the other one forward Backward again, she can, you know, giggle while Sideswipe tries to kiss her through her mask. Sidekick, if you want a high sidekick, you need to open up both legs and she can do a pretty high one. Bends at the knee. As part of the transformation, the uh, legs move. So if you push it forward, you could actually push it forward too much, but that's a heck of a knee right there. Bam, bam, bam. Does she have a swivel? She does all the way around in this case. The swivel is in the middle of her thigh. So that is a nice thing. Can she twist at the waist? She can all the way around. So all the way around she goes. Now it doesn't appear that there are any other points of articulation in the abdomen, in the chest. Her arms can, again, if you maneuver them around, you can, they go all the way around at the ball joint, but the wings keep you from just sending it all the way around. She can go off to the side, bend at the elbow. There looks like there should be and there is a swivel. It was just a little tight. I took this out of its package like very shortly before this video, so I hadn't really messed with her joints much. So arms are pretty good. The head can go all the way around and she can again look up. So there's a little bit of like a, almost a spring action there when you push it back. Can't really go too much forward. The wings, you can kind of move them back and fourth, not a heck of a lot. And just like the other one, you can spin around her fans and use those as weapons to create wind tunnel effects. So that is the Robots in Disguise one. And she's got a nice sword that you can pop into her hand. It's not super steady in there. And she can also just carry the sheath if she wants to. It almost looks like a gun. So if you want to use it as a gun, I'm not going to complain. So, Robots in Disguise version. All right, one more robot mode to go. And that is the Combiner Wars, which is again based on the Generations version. And I'm going to put her sheath on her leg and try to straighten out her heels so she can stand. So, with the Generations and the Combiner Wars versions of this character, yeah, the heels, she doesn't stand too easily. And she just lost her sheath. I mean, she can stand, but it is very easy to push those heels out of place and then she couldn't stand. We're just gonna put the sheath right there for now. But this is from the Combiner Hunters set. She's got a really big staff that's taller than she is. Basically could probably fight the, uh, the Great Sage and uh, win with this particular staff, but good for stabbing. It's a very nice staff and the figure as well if you ignore the heels, looks very cool. I'm gonna bring her head up because she's kind of looking down. Nice Autobot symbol on the chest. She's got the fan on the back of her head, which we can wiggle out, I believe, and place in her hand as an additional weapon. So overall, a cool figure, great deco on the face. The nice blue forehead and the blue eyes with the red points coming down onto the silver face. Very nice, nice highlights. I like the deco on this particular version of Wingblade. I keep on wanting to call her Wingblade. I know it's Windblade. If I mess up, it's just because I think Wingblade sounds slightly cooler. I don't know, that's just the impression that I get. But about the same amount of kibble on the back. And having the staff can actually help her stand because uh, if the heels are out of place, yeah, she's kind of screwed. So that's the one complaint I have about this, but she looks pretty good. All right, let's go over the posability. I'm gonna put the fan in the back of her head and we're gonna remove this staff for the moment. Big staff, two of them you can use them as chopsticks. Oh, and the sword, I do want to show that because it's a nice cool blue lightsaber blade, much more traditional Jedi. And it's got a little uh, type of fan in the hilt, so it's Form blazing sword. Okay, let's all try. Oh, cool weapons. All right, let's go over the posability. 
We've gawked at her enough. And first of all, let's check out. There does not appear to be any type of swivel or tilt in the ankles. Her lower legs are formed from two pieces coming together. She's got those weird heels. So not really a way to swivel. You can kind of turn the heels out, but I don't think that's really helpful. That's more part of the transformation. But provided maybe you have to turn those out in order to put her into a nice Jean-Claude Van Damme, um, which she can do 100%. Toes up. But her foot just came off. That's not fun, but it pops right back on. So not a big deal. Wish I could take my foot off and pop it back on. Make trimming the toenails a little easier. She can kick forward. Her knee's a little bit double jointed, but when you swing it forward, she can't go higher than 90 degrees. So, but she can kick forward. She can kick back. It's not as high as some of the others, but still pretty good. Obviously she can do a side kick, but you're gonna wanna move the wing out of the way. If you try to do a side kick with the wing in the way, eh, kind of interferes a little bit. Though you could always, you know, kind of separate the arm and the wing. Still, side kicks, not a problem. Bends at the knee. Doesn't have the uh, damage buster quite like uh, the other one's little point here, but it's very rounded here. It looks kind of like a mechanical joint, which is nice. She does have, I, I just want to note, like landing gear on the back of her leg, which is kind of weird. Does she have a swivel? No, she does not. So she can bend at the knee, she can move it around, but there is no swiveling. I mean, just slightly. Very slightly, but uh, no real swivel intended there, it looks like. Twisting at the waist. It appears she can. Um, it's going to kind of rub up against the nose cone a little bit in the back, but eh, it even clears that a little bit. So she can twist at the waist, which is nice. Arms. Now, you can move them with the wings or without. If you move with the wings, then she can go all the way around without a problem. If you don't, you're going to have to end up moving the wing anyway if you wanted to go all the way around. But yes, arms go all the way around. She can move them out to the side, get to all kinds of poses there, bend at the elbow. She's got a swivel there on the arm. That is basically because of the uh, joint up near the shoulder. The shoulder pads actually ow, move, so that is nice. The head, it looks like you should be able to turn it, but it doesn't really want to turn. And I'm not going to apply excessive force. The neck guard kind of interferes with turning it. It looks like it's on a ball joint. But uh, you can move the head forward and back. She can look up. But I wouldn't uh, try to turn it too far. But overall, the wings, as you saw, they can go forward and such. You can also bend them up. You, can, you should be able to fold them somewhat, I think. Yeah, you can fold them back. I'm not going to try to force it forward. I don't think it's supposed to go that way. And like the others, she can spin her fans around, I believe. Though not all the way. It's more for moving them forward for different uh, speed in flight situations. So overall, a cool figure. And again, she's got the nice sword with a sheath and this rather large staff. So she is well equipped. Now, if you push the heels forward, you can kind of, she's a little bit frog-footed there, flat-footed. You can avoid using the heels and avoid that instability, but she's supposed to be on her heels. I don't know why with uh, superheroes and female Autobots, they want to give them high heels. It's like not the easiest to maneuver in. All right, let's do some side-by-sides and then we'll get into the uh, vehicle modes. So in the center, of course, we have the brand new Legacy. And again, nice deco, more silver than gold on uh, some of it. Whereas Robots in Disguise has a lot more yellow. Same thing, gold, yellowish tones with the Combiner Wars version. But still, a nice looking figure. I know there's some other ones out there, ones more of like Fort Max colors. I'd love to get all the wind blades one day, perhaps, you know, but some of them are a little bit pricey. But yeah, height wise, they're all pretty similar about five inches on the Legacy, and about the same on Robots in Disguise. And I don't even really need to check this one. She's about five inches as well. So the height has not changed. That's one thing that doesn't always happen with the United figures. Some of them are a bit smaller than the originals, but in this case, they're all about the same size. So 
very nice. Let's check out the vehicle modes. And there are 16 steps for this wind blade. So there she is in her vehicle mode. Very cool looking uh, VTOL, I imagine, jet because of, you know, the fans. It's supposed to provide her lift so she can go straight up. And, you know, nice deco. Again, you can see stuff carried over the silver from the legs, the silver on the fans, which can, of course, be moved forward for additional speed. Nice clear cockpit, which doesn't open. I just figured I'd check. Now, her sword, I hate to say it, but you put it up her ass, according to the instructions. But you put it up her ass and you actually plug it into the knees, <laughs> I guess they are now, or where the feet are actually. So she's got a big ass blast effect coming out, not even from her jets, but you know, she has got some speed there. So weapon storage, which is nice. And of course, when she lifts off, you can lift her landing gear, which is right here. And then she can fly into battle. Pretty cool. I like it overall. Some of the instructions seemed to uh, want me to do stuff that I don't quite get, but we got there, I hope. Someone's gonna probably leave a comment and be like, you mistransformed this, you forget to do the Whatever, we got her, she's nice. So cool, vehicle mode, I can't do a uh, roll test because she's a jet, but very nice. Let's take a look at the robots in disguise who definitely has a simpler transformation. I do think the one on the new uh, wing blade is very clever. There's some neat stuff that you can actually do in it and definitely a little bit more complex than say the Robots in Disguise version, the original. Oh, quickly, one thing that's not documented is you can actually take her hands and put them on these posts. That does not appear to be in the instructions unless it's the uh, part right at the beginning but it doesn't really make it clear, but you can put her hands around these posts and kind of keep them out of sight. There's the Robots in Disguise version. Very similar looking, but I kind of like the, uh, it's got a little bit more black deco, a much more colorful cockpit, and the gold up here instead of the silver. A little silver here, um, but cool jet. Also has landing gear on the bottom. Not so much in the back, but she's got little uh, points here from her toes that kind of keep it level. Very cool. The only thing that's kind of weird is the storage of the sword, which is supposed to go underneath, which isn't much of a disguise that, you know, this jet is carrying around a really big sword in a sheath. But still, overall, a cool looking vehicle. And uh, she do fly. She do fly. But finally, let's take the Combiner Wars. Put her into her vehicle mode. So there is Combiner Wars Wingblade pretty much in her vehicle mode. I have to say, I'm not fond of the transformation of this one. I might have it slightly off. Always seem to leave some gaps in here. I mean, cool looking jet overall. Even has some uh, nice landing gear in the front, but always seem to be difficult to get these wings to kind of pop into the exact place that they should. It looks like there should be things that tab in and maybe they do. And maybe I just, I looked at the instructions once. It was a huge poster for the Combiner Wars. It's like everybody on one thing, but yeah, my least favorite of the vehicle modes, just because of the difficulty getting her to be in her proper figuration with no gaps. And yeah, probably should have transformed her a few more times before this video. Still overall, a cool looking jet, nice, uh, fans on the wings that of course can be pushed forward just like the others and add to her speed. And nice deco, I like the gold, the black, not really a ton of silver except for the rivets. Yeah, if you know what I did wrong here, uh, let me know. Or if it's just, this is the way it is, this is the way it is. So there you go, the three vehicle modes, not counting the blast effect. The legacy is about five almost six inches long from head to tail. About six and a quarter for the Combiner Wars slash Generations and still only maybe five, five and a quarter for the Robots in Disguise. But still all cool vehicles. Again, I probably screwed up something with the Generations, the Combiner Wars. 
There doesn't seem to be a place to put her spear when she is in uh, vehicle mode, but if I recall correctly, which I may not, you can uh, plug the sword under there. Still a cool figure, glad I have her, even if I mess up the transformation sometimes. Why didn't you help me? Dang it! But there you have them, three different versions of the City Speaker Windblade. And I'm definitely enjoying the new legacy. I think it's very solid, but I think they all have good and bad parts. Though the legacy seems to avoid the pitfalls that the other two have had. But let me know in the comments which one you think is the best. And if I screwed up this transformation, what, I, what am I missing? Dang it. Or is it just not the best mold? Even though they use it so many times. But I really hope you're enjoying these videos as much as I enjoy making them, even though I occasionally get some frustration in there. And I will put links to all these guys in the description so you can get them if you would like. And, you know, again, let me know which one you like best. And while you're mulling over this particular Jet of Doom, who happens to be a city speaker, you can check out a city over here. It is actually a reissue counterfeit of a city called Metroplex. So check that out over there. It's a fun video. And we will see you next time. As always, have fun and good hunting.